Which is the right major for you, electrical or biomedical engineering? This is what we will be talking about today, but before we get started, please don't forget to smash the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss out on any future content just like this that are going to lead you to success. Obviously, there's no right or wrong answer when it comes to what our passion is, but a lot of the times that might be unknown until a later stage in our life. So it's important to understand all the implications that come with choosing a specific major. Electrical and biomedical engineering are two of the popular engineering disciplines. And I gotta admit that both seem like attractive majors on paper. But well, let's dive deeper into the curriculum, job outlook, salary, and prestige to see if these majors are really as attractive as they appear to be so you can make an educated decision for yourself and not have any regrets about dropping 100 grand on a wrong degree after college. Let's start off with an easy question. If you've taken physics class in high school, try to remember if you enjoy the electricity and magnetism portion. If your answer is yes in designing and analyzing the electrical hardware and circuitry and products like iPhones, cars, and airplanes sounds interesting to you, then electricity Electrical engineering is probably a good choice. On the flip side, if you enjoy physics in general, including mechanics and electricity and magnetism, as well as chemistry, biology, and anatomy class in high school, specifically the content related to molecules, cells, tissue, and organ systems of the human body, then biomedical engineering is likely right for you. Again, this is just a preliminary evaluation to at least point you in the right direction of either of the two engineering disciplines. Now, in order to determine if electrical or biomedical engineering is a better fit for you, we must first know exactly what these two things are. So what in the world is electrical engineering? It's a very versatile branch of engineering focusing on the study, design, and application of devices and systems which use electricity, electronics, and electromagnetism such as electric motors, radar and navigation systems, communication systems, and power generation equipment spanning the aerospace, automotive, construction, consumer electronics, defense, food, medical, and energy industries. Now let's talk about biomedical engineering. What in the world is that? It's essentially a specialized discipline that seeks to create state-of-the-art healthcare products such as medical equipment, devices, and medicines through medical research and engineering for treating injuries and diseases. As a biomedical engineer, you will leverage knowledge spanning mechanical, electrical, materials engineering, and computer science, develop things like artificial limbs, biomaterials that are compatible with the human body, pacemakers, ECMO machines, 3D printed organs, and even drug delivery methods for treating cancers. Now that you have a high level understanding of these two disciplines, how does the curriculum for these two majors stack up against each other? As you probably can guess, both electrical and biomedical engineering students take the general set of engineering core courses during their freshman and sophomore year like math, which includes calculus one and two, multivariate calculus, differential equations, statistics, linear algebra, physics one, which is mechanics, and physics two, which is electricity and magnetism, as well as basic chemistry. Moving on to the common engineering courses between these two majors, you will have to take mechanics one or statics, circuits, programming with a common language such as MATLAB or Python, for solving engineering problems and an introductory design course intended to build a problem solving mindset, computer skills, and familiarity with elements of engineering design. From this point on, the courses between these two majors will begin to diverge and become more specialized. So as an electrical engineering major, you will take electromagnetic systems covering time varying electric and magnetic fields, Maxwell equations, electromagnetic waves, remote sensing applications, radio frequency coaxial cables, optical fibers, microwave sources and resonators, antennas, and wireless communication systems. Signals and systems class will involve tons of math and introduce continuous and discrete time signals and systems, convolution sum and integral, stability of systems, frequency domain analysis, filtering and sampling, Laplace and Z transform and linear feedback systems. You will also take intro to electronics that talks all about diodes, different types of circuits like bipolar junction transistor and metal oxide semiconductor field effect transistor, amplifiers, digital inverters and logic gates, biasing and small signal analysis, as well as microelectronic design techniques. 
Intro to Logic Design will be another required course that introduces hardware building blocks used in digital computers, such as Boolean algebra, combinatorial and sequential circuits, decoders and encoders, multiplexers, programmable logic devices, read-only memory, counters, and Verilog hardware description language. Like all engineering majors, you'll take a year-long senior design team-based project design course where you will work in teams comprised of three to five students with a potential mix of electrical and computer engineering majors and a company to solve a problem in some area of electrical engineering. For example, this group of electrical engineering students at my school created a device leveraging image processing circuits, sensors, and a web app together with a medical company to treat jaundice and in infants using blue photolight therapy. You'll also generally have to take three to five mandatory electives from a list of classes. And if you're interested, here is the list of courses that we could take at my school. So as a biomedical engineering major, you will take a course related to the principles of molecular cell biology and biotechnology that introduces things like molecular building blocks, energetics, transport, metabolism, nucleic acids, gene expression, and genetics through lectures and labs. Moving on to your junior year, you will generally take a systems physiology course introducing topics like homeostasis and neuro, muscle, respiratory, cardiovascular, renal, endocrine, gastrointestinal, and metabolic physiology. Another course you will take includes signals and controls that covers things like signals, systems, and feedback control with an emphasis on biomedical problems using analytical and computational methods, including linear time invariant systems and continuous and discrete time Laplace and Fourier representations, transfer functions, pool zero analysis, stability, convolution, and sampling. This course will be followed by two courses called Biomedical Measurements 1 and 2. Biomedical Measurements 1 is designed to develop skills for collecting and analyzing biomedical measurements and learning proper usage of electronic equipment, including oscilloscopes, function generators, DACs. Biomedical Measurements 2, on the other hand, will focus on labs designed to develop basic instrumentation and analysis skills for physiological and biological measurements. Emphasis will be placed on techniques involving light, such as spectroscopy and microscopy, and sound, such as ultrasound. Like all engineering majors, biomedical engineering students will also propose and complete a senior design project with a small team in an area of biomedical engineering, such as biomedical instrumentation, biosensors, tissue engineering, biological signal processing, biological modeling and simulation, clinical imaging, or informational systems. You will also have the choice to choose three or four biomedical engineering electives and several professional electives from a list of courses based on your personal interests. To give you a sense of what options will be available to you, this is a list of electives that my school offered. So the question to ask yourself is, are you more interested in the design, development, and testing of rigid and flexible PCB technology, hardware, power, and control systems, and using oscilloscopes and other tools to debug subsystems in say an iPad or Boeing 747? Or are you more interested in the design, development, and testing of artificial limbs, life support machines for critically ill patients and even astronauts, organ implants, and diagnostic equipment using CAD and programming? So now that we have a good sense of the curriculum, let's compare the annual salaries and see what the current and future job outlook looks like for these two types of engineers. Let's begin with the salary breakdown for electrical engineers. We see that the median salary is $103,390, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $64,870 and $159,520 respectively. Obviously, things like years of experience and work location will contribute to this salary gap, so someone with 10 plus years experience working in California or New York will probably be amongst the top 5% of earners. The total number of available electrical engineering jobs in 2020 was 313,200 and is expected to see a 7% increase in job growth between 2020 and 2030, which is average. Now moving on to biomedical engineering, we see that the median salary is $97,410, while the lowest 10% and highest 10% made $60,680 and $154,750 respectively, and the median salary of electrical engineering is about $6,000 more than that of biomedical engineers. The total number of available biomedical engineering jobs in 2020 was 19,300, which is 16 times less than the number of available electrical engineering jobs. So job security is not great for biomedical engineers. 
It's expected to see a 6% increase in job growth between 2020 and 2030, which is slightly below average compared to the overall engineering field of 7%. Electrical engineering beats biomedical engineering both in terms of salary and job prospects, and job security is something you will not have to worry about. Aside from the curriculum, salary, and job outlook, the last component we'll look at is prestige. For some people, it's all about the respect. Now the way I've defined prestige is how well known is the company you work at, and I assume that the larger the company, the more prestige it has. For all intents and purposes, we'll assume that the job title is not correlated with prestige. Consequently, I have evaluated prestige solely based on the total number of top 100 Fortune 500 companies that offer electrical and biomedical engineering jobs. There was a clear winner, which I'm sure many of you have already guessed, but here are the results. 38 out of the 100 companies offered electrical engineering jobs, including Amazon, Apple, Alphabet, ExxonMobil, AT&T, Microsoft, Verizon, Ford Motor, General Motors, Comcast, Chevron, Dell, Marathon, Facebook, Johnson & Johnson, General Electric, Intel, Procter & Gamble, Lockheed Martin, Valero Energy, Boeing, HP, Raytheon, Tyson Foods, Pfizer, Caterpillar, Oracle, Dow, General Dynamics, Northrop Grumman, John Deere, Abbott Laboratories, Exelon, Coca-Cola, Honeywell, Thermo Fisher, 3M, and Tesla. By contrast, 10 out of the 100 companies offer biomedical engineering jobs, including Amazon, Apple, CVS Health, McKesson, Cardinal Health, Johnson & Johnson, Procter & Gamble, General Electric, Abbott Laboratories, and Thermo Fisher. All right, summarizing everything we talked about, the curriculum for electrical and biomedical engineering is neck and neck in terms of difficulty. What's common between these two majors is the math and engineering problem solving mindset. While electrical engineering classes focus on equipping students with knowledge in the design and development of electrical devices and products, biomedical engineering classes are geared towards students wishing to gain expertise in engineering design and analysis of physiological measuring and diagnostic products, as well as quantitative analysis of the human body's normal and abnormal functions. Moving on to salary, electrical engineers have the potential of making more more money compared to biomedical engineers, where the median salary for electrical engineers is $103,390, while for biomedical engineers, it's $97,410. Obviously, if you work at one of the big tech companies, you will make a lot more and these numbers are no longer accurate, but in general, they hold true for most companies. Finally, the job security and prestige level that comes with electrical engineering tops biomedical engineering by a long shot. So definitely ask yourself if these two things matter to you. At the end of the day, the goal is to pick a major that you can build a career out of and enjoy doing for a lifetime. There's really no right or wrong answer when it comes to choosing electrical or biomedical engineering. You might be someone who already knows that your dream job is to work at Apple as an electrical engineer to design printed circuit boards and flex cables that go into an iPhone 20. Or you want to work at Johnson & Johnson as a biomedical engineer to design hip implants and surgical instruments that saves millions of lives. I think knowing what you want already in college is fantastic, but rarely is this the case and more often times than not, you won't know exactly what you want until after working several full-time jobs or internships. If this applies to you, then I definitely recommend going with electrical engineering because the compensation, job security, and prestige blows biomedical engineering out of the water. All right, as always, thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one. Peace.